In this video, we will learn why China is interested in Arunachal Pradesh and especially the region of Tawang. Everyone is aware of the fact that the Chinese intrusions on the eastern borders of the country are nothing new, especially near Tawang and Anjao district of Arunachal Pradesh. Tawang is here and Anjao is here. In the Anjao district, the Chinese troops have to travel through dense forest to reach the plum post. As you can see this yellow line, it is the National Highway 13, part of the Arunachal Highway Network that connects the Walong cantonment of the Anjao district in the southeast to the Tawang district in northwest. The India-China border is somewhere around 25 kilometers away from the Walong cantonment. This cantonment lies on the banks of river Lohit, which is a transboundary river that rises in Tibet, which is under Chinese control. There, the name of this river is Zayu River. This river flows southwest and becomes a tributary of river Brahmaputra. This region is covered with dense forest and quite often the Chinese troops that is China's People's Liberation Army have been spotted entering in the Indian territory via this river route. And then if we go to the Tawang district, it is a district in the northwestern region of Arunachal Pradesh that borders with Bhutan. The Chinese troops have also increased their activity in this region. In fact, the 1962 India-China war happened on two fronts, one in Ladakh and the second was in Arunachal Pradesh. At that time, Arunachal Pradesh was known as the Northeast Frontier Agency, NEFA. In Arunachal Pradesh, the Indian Army held the Chinese back both at Walong and Tawang, despite little resources. When Dalai Lama escaped from Tibet to India on 38 March 1959, he entered India through the Tawang Valley. Anyhow, so what you have to remember is these two locations in Arunachal Pradesh. One is the Tawang district and the other one is the Walong cantonment in Anjao district. Now I will tell you the importance of Tawang. As per the 2011 census, the population of Tawang district is somewhere around 50,000. This region of Tawang provides strategic entry for China into India's Brahmaputra Valley and also to other northeastern states. The Chinese obsession with the Tawang region is totally strategic. In fact, if you look at the Chinese map, China claims the entire Indian state of Arunachal Pradesh as part of South Tibet or Zhangnan. In the past, China has also made a proposal to India for swapping Tawang with Aksai Chin. And that's what brings us to this question. Why is China interested in Tawang? What is China's motive? Before I answer this, let's quickly get to know about Tibet. You see, Tibet is a plateau region. You will find mountains, but at the same time, you will also find vast plain land. Lhasa is the capital of Tibet. Most of the Tibetan population resides here. Lhasa is a flat river valley with mountain peaks around it. If you look at this map, you will see that the southern region of Lhasa till the Arunachal Pradesh and Bhutan border is a plain area along with valleys and mountains. Now the first reason why Chinese want Tawang region is because they say there are historical ties between the Tawang monastery and the Lhasa monastery of Tibet. The sixth Dalai Lama, that is Sangyang Gyatso, was born in Tawang. And therefore Arunachal is very much part of Tibet. Since Tibet is under Chinese control, so Arunachal Pradesh should also be part of China. This is the first reason they give. Now the second reason is, if you look at the ethnicity of people living in upper Arunachal region, including Tawang, I am talking about tribes like Tagen, Naishi and Galo, you will find most of them are in some ways related to the people of Tibet. They are descendants of the Mongolite race. Their ancestors had migrated from Tibet at some point. So having such a strong Tibetan presence in Arunachal is a threat to China. Because China has this fear that India may use these people, take advantage of this demography, along with the presence of Dalai Lama and the Tibetan government in exile in Dharamshala for creating some sort of pro-democratic Tibetan movement against China. So this is another reason why China is interested in Arunachal. Now coming to the third reason why China wants Tawang. Have a look at Bhutan. Arunachal Pradesh provides security to the kingdom of Bhutan in its entire eastern flank. If China occupies Tawang, then Bhutan will be surrounded by China on both its eastern as well as western side. If you look at the western side of Bhutan, Chinese have made a motorable highway road named G204. It connects the Chinese National Highway G318 till the nearest village located close to India-China-Bhutan tri-junction border near Batangla, passing through Doklam Plateau. 
If you remember in 2017, the Doklam incident took place. Doklam is part of Bhutan. Although India does not claim Doklam but supports Bhutan's claim and opposes China's road construction. China has also constructed a road from Batangla to Dokala and wants to extend it further south towards Gamochen where the Indian army is guarding. Dokala is the place where the border standoff between Indian and Chinese troops took place. Anyways, China is building a road towards Gamochen. This will not only lead to intrusion into Bhutan's territory but also a security threat for India as it would bring the Chinese closer to the Siliguri corridor. But the real concern is that China has not only built motorable highway roads connecting such remote hostile strategic locations it has also started building railway lines that will link Shichua province with Nyangchi province in Tibet. China has also built a railway line that connects the town of Lhasa with Qinghai and Shichua province. Although the railway line is not yet complete, once it's complete, it will increase the efficiency and convenience of transporting Chinese military personnel and other logistic supplies near the Arunachal Pradesh border area. It is said that the rail journey from Shichuan province to Lhasa will be covered in 13 hours. Through roadways, it is 48 hours. This railway track will prove to be an advantage for the Chinese military for delivering strategic materials if a scenario of crisis happens. You see, this can easily turn out to be unfavorable for India's and Bhutan's security. Now coming to the fourth reason. If you look at mainland China, this is mainland China. So Arunachal Pradesh is the closest location for India to launch any missiles that will successfully hit China where it will hurt China. Arunachal is also the best location for India to deploy multi-layered air defense system on the ground against China's air operations. This becomes another reason why China wants to occupy Arunachal. Now to acquire Arunachal Pradesh and predominantly the region of Tawang, China is desperate to shift the tri-junction border further south by intruding Bhutan's territory so that they can move closer to the Siliguri corridor. If you look at the Siliguri corridor, it is barely 25 kilometers wide and it connects Indian mainland to the states of northeast. This narrow strip of land is popularly known as Chicken's Neck and it poses a major defense challenge for India. All land trade between the northeast and the rest of the country happens through this corridor. From the new Jalpaiguri station, a rail link moved towards Guwahati in Assam. It is also from here that a road network moves towards the strategically important Tawang town in Arunachal Pradesh. Now if you look at the Siliguri corridor, to its south you have the Bangladesh border and then you have the Nepal border to the north. As you know, Nepal is also not showing much cooperation these days. China has been active in Nepal and has invested hugely. Due to that, Nepal is not showing much cooperation to India. The northwestern part of Bangladesh has strong presence of Jamatul Mujahideen Bangladesh, a terrorist organization. Realizing the importance of Siliguri Corridor, China is also involved in funding various anti-state elements and insurgency groups in West Bengal and other northeastern states, who are anyway fighting for various causes against the Indian government. If the Chinese succeed in this operation, then it will cut all essential road and rail supply networks to the Indian Army who are deployed in the Tawang district and thereby encroaching upon Tawang which will give China easy access to cut off northeast from the rest of India. Apart from blocking the Siliguri corridor, China also has the power to control India's water supply. You must have heard in the news many times that the Chinese have built multiple dams on the river Yanlang Sangpo or river Brahmaputra. One of the reason is to capture the power of moving water to generate electricity. This is what the Chinese says. But the strategic reason behind that is to control India's water supply in the northeast. Since Tibet is called as an autonomous region, it is very much in control of China. That means China claims the ownership of Tibet's water. We all are aware of the fact that the Tibetan plateau is higher in elevation. From that height, if a river enters into the state of Arunachal Pradesh, just imagine the speed of the river. All this region is a low-lying area. If at all China suddenly releases all the stored water from all the dams on the Brahmaputra, it will cause havoc in northeastern region. Similarly, by blocking the flow of water, China can potentially cause drought in the lower agricultural regions of Assam's Brahmaputra Valley. Hence, by controlling the flow of river Brahmaputra, China is going to use water as a geopolitical weapon against India. So these are some strategies that the Chinese have planned up for India to acquire Arunachal Pradesh and especially the region of Tawang. 